Today, my colleagues and I are being asked to consider the future of theater. As the theater community scrambles to keep audiences engaged from afar while trying to keep the lights on, many have begun to stream plays, which I, I fully understand and I support. Uh, some have asked, is this the future of theater? And personally, I just don't think it is. Uh, watching actors perform on screen is engaging and entertaining, and it's an art form in and of itself, and we have a name for it. That's what film is, and that's what TV is. But I don't think it's theater. The very premise of theater is gathering people together in a shared space to enjoy a shared experience. You know, I'm reminded of a few summers ago, uh, my wife Deirdre and I were in uh, Greece on vacation, and we spent a few days in Athens, and we took a uh, we took a podcast tour of the city to help identify what we were looking at as there were so many fascinating sites and we went up to the, uh, the Parthenon atop the Acropolis and, uh, and the podcast told us, the podcast would tell us that you know, this is what the Caryatids represent and this is the monument of, 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 to Agrippa and, uh, and it's interesting of course but we don't really know what that means, it's 2500 years ago. But then you look down the eastern slope of the Acropolis. And what you see there, a child today can tell you what it is. It's a theater. Uh, it's a space uh, around a stage, what is clearly a stage, what is clearly an audience space. And it's the theater of Dionysus, where the great plays of Aeschylus, Euripides, Sophocles, and Aristophanes were performed. And you take away climate control, theater technology, and of course the cell phone that goes off at the quietest moment in performance. And what we do on our stages today is exactly what we were doing 2,500 years ago. Exactly the same thing. In 2017, a study found that patrons' hearts beat at the same time during a live theater performance. This type of synchronicity has been linked to trust, to empathy, to friendship, the removal of social barriers, camaraderie that doesn't happen in the same way when we watch a performance virtually. To be quite frank, the Guthrie, and I believe all theaters, are struggling right now. We're struggling emotionally, we're struggling financially, we're struggling artistically, because we can't practice or experience our art form, which relies wholly on in-person collaboration and people coming together. I'm not worried about the theater at all in the long future. It's been around 2,500 years. It's essential in people's lives. Uh, if we have to be away for a time, uh, I think we all can survive that. Because in the end, we're going to need a place where we can regather, a place where we can uh, celebrate, where we can uh, join in, in joy and entertainment. And sometimes as around a campfire to huddle against the pressing darkness. We need that space. We need a place that honors diversity even as it celebrates the homogeny of the human spirit. We all need grace. As we move through this period of profound uncertainty. I find it comforting to know that fundamentally our art form is the same as it ever was. We're storytellers. People gathered at the theater of Dionysus 2,500 years ago to hear stories that reflected their dreams, their loves, their fears, and that is precisely what we do today. Given this centuries old tradition of telling stories on stage, I would argue that theater is not some old fashioned practice that has survived accidentally. Perhaps it has thrived because it is one of society's proven necessities. I spent my career encouraging people to leave their homes, come out to the theater, any theater, and as we say at the Guthrie, to celebrate our common humanity. At some point in the near future, I will ask you to do this again. Until then, I encourage you to stay home, take care. We miss seeing you at the Guthrie, but I'm grateful that if we have to be in this, that we are all in this together.